In this video, we are discussing risk management. You can think of risk management mainly in the context of uh, due care. We talked about in our earlier videos the difference between due care and due, due diligence, where we said due care really focuses more on the maintenance or follow up on what was discussed or what was planned in the due diligence process where planning was the focus. So due care again is very relevant to risk management or risk management is very relevant to due care because it's an ongoing process that's an element of sustaining a secure environment and the goal the true goal of risk management is really to reduce risk to an acceptable level. Just like security management planning, risk management is also initiated by upper management. So initiation is done by the upper management. When the risk management process is initiated, upper management has to define its scope, purpose, and also support the whole risk management process by providing funding and also providing moral support. And finally, when there is this risk management plan finished and about to be executed, the upper management or senior management people have to approve the risk management plan and they truly have to take advantage of the entire risk management process by making decisions based on assessment especially risk assessment results and outcomes from the risk management process so that's pretty much the role of upper management and what about the security professionals and practitioners. Their role is more about implementing this risk management process or plan. So actual process of performing risk analysis and conducting a risk assessment that's actually done by the experts who are security professionals and practitioners. And usually these are done by a team of people rather than an individual which reflects the diversity of the demographics of an organization. So why is uh, risk analysis so important? The first reason has a lot to do with this uh, impossibility of removing all risks 100%. Because you are not able to remove all the risks out there you always have to think about what residual risks are out there and which is why a constant risk analysis is a necessity so uh, this residual li risk can be defined in terms of something called total risk which can be computed by considering threats vulnerabilities and asset value together and something called controls gap so if you subtract controls gap from total risk what's left is something called residual risk so controls gap in this case simply means whatever risk that is addressed by security controls introduced to the environment so that much of the risks is taken care of by introducing these countermeasures or controls. So that's why whatever is left after you're removing the risks by introducing these new controls, that's what's called residual risk. Another reason why risk analysis is so important is this necessity of prioritizing risks based on risk assessment because there's so many different types of risks out there 
you cannot address all these individual risks so somehow you have to prioritize and decide which risk is the most important risk to address so which risks are based on the assessment we decide which risks are actually either mitigated transferred or accepted and even rejected so mitigation simply means by introducing a new control we reduce the risk transferring a risk means we are somehow letting somebody else take the risk from us so a good example of this would be an insurance policy and then accepting a risk means after risk assessment you decide that the risk is not worthy of your time and money so you're simply taking the risk by not doing anything we have also this last item which is rejecting a risk and this could be probably the worst thing ever you could do because in this case although you are recognizing the risk somehow you're ignoring it and you're not even considering the risk or you're not even evaluating the risk so you don't even know what kind of an impact it may have on your environment so the ultimate goal of risk analysis is really balancing the expected cost of asset loss and the cost of deploying safeguards so for example if it's too expensive to deploy a safeguard while the cost of asset loss is pretty minimal say ten dollars and then the cost of a safeguard or control is ten thousand dollars I mean there is no question about it I mean you won't do anything about the risk however the cost of deploying safeguards is relatively cheaper than the cost of asset loss so for example the control costs you two hundred dollars and the cost of asset loss is ten thousand dollars of course you will address the risk by introducing this new control into your environment so it's a uh, delicate balancing act and uh, we call this process a cost-benefit analysis in general so again this whole process can be viewed as cost-benefit comparison process and only cost-effective countermeasures are deployed as we just discussed